Hey guys, what's up? We're gonna be doing a different type of Honkai Star Rail guide video today. I'm gonna to be telling you which light cones are best for your sealer. Now, if you're like me and you've pulled sealer, but you haven't had any luck getting her light cone, this is the video for you. We're gonna be going through every single hunt path light cone, gauging them from best to worst. Now we're gonna start off with Sealer's light cone, obviously, and it's obviously the best one for her because it gives you a flat crit rate of 18%, which is amazing. And then while she's in battle, for every 10 speed that exceeds 100, the damage of her basic attack and skill is increased by 6%. This is important because if you play Sealer, you know that she literally eats turns, like no one gets a turn. When he, she has enough speed and her skill increases her speed for two turns as well, She's always doing turns. She's got the extra turn passive as well. So this is defaultly, right, going to be at 6%. Because her base speed is 115. And on top of that, defaultly, she's going to have a crit damage increase from her on her ult, specifically, of 12%. And that's default. Because again, it has for every speed that exceeds 10 over 100, right? And she starts off with 115. So you defaultly have all of these. This is all flat rate on Sealer specifically. Right, I haven't looked into the other hunt characters because this is a sealer guide, but for sealer, this is all flat rate, which is amazing, right? You end up increasing her speed to 160-ish. This becomes 36%. This becomes 72%. So easily, very, very easily, this is the best bloody uh, light cone for sealer in the game. Like this is no argument, right? It's not a question. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. This is the best light cone in the game for her. They made it for her. It's her light cone. If you get it, you're lucky. Your sealer's gonna be OP as long as you build her right. The next one I would say, which is the next best one after it for a free to play player, especially because you can max in position it for free during the simulated universe is cruising in the stellar sea, right? Increases the wearer's crit rate by 8%. That's cool, it's a flat 8% crit rate increase, but it also increases their crit rate against enemies with HP less than or equal to 50% by an extra 8%, so that's 16%, right? When the wearer defeats an enemy, their attack is increased by 20% for two turns. Two turns, that's a whole like, that's two cycles basically, right? Um, and if you're playing Sealer, who you're gonna eat up turns anyway and just keep going through turns, this is really good. Especially because the way she eats up turns is by killing enemies repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. It's good for bosses. If you can clear out boss waves of Sealer, you're gonna get that guaranteed extra attack buff. And you're gonna get that guaranteed extra crit rate on top of that. And because we can guarantee super imposition five it, we can get it easy an easy 32 crit rate bonus on enemies below 50%. Flat rate 16, and then a flat rate damage bonus of 40% when you kill someone, which is just, yeah, it's just the value to be able to super imposition this by five is just, it's too high value in my opinion. So we're gonna rate that. Where's it gone? We've lost it. There it is. 100%, I would say that is an S tier as well. Strictly because it's a free one that you can get at Super Position 5, the value is insane. Now the next one we're going to be talking about is Sleep Like the Dead. Now this is Yan Ching's personal light cone, I don't own Yan Ching, I would like to pull Yan Ching. So I don't know exactly what he does, but we're going to go through the skills either way. Now you get a flat crit rate damage of 30%, which is amazing, that's already really good. The secondary skill here is what worries me. Now watch this. When the wearer's basic attack call skill does not result in a critical hit, increases their crit rate by 36% for one turn. And that's good until you get to the next part. This effect can only trigger once every three turns. That's what concerns me. Now again, I don't own Yan Ching. I'm not a Yan Ching player. So let me know in the comments if I'm judging this a bit wrong, but because of that every three turns, I would only put this in the A tier. Now the reason I'm putting it in the A tier instead of the B tier is for the fact that it's a five star light cone. So already the base stats are already an implication to use it, right? Already over a four star. So it will stay in the A tier, but it's gonna stay in the A tier specifically because I don't know about this. Now I don't know about Yan Ching's speed stat. I don't know if his speed stat's up there and you can get a lot of turns like Sealer because obviously Sealer's got her speed stat and her talent on top. Now if Yan Ching's speed can get up to par with Sealer's or at least close to Sealer's, okay. This free turns isn't too bad because you're going to fucking zoom through your turns, right? Because you're the hunt character. But if it's not the case, I would say this is only an A tier light cone compared to this, which you can superimpose five times for free. No, four times, sorry. Up to in position five for free. And seal as one if you get lucky enough to pull it. Next, we're going to go through the four star light cones. River flows in spring. Let's get out the way. After entering battle, increases the wearer's speed by 8% and damage by 12%. That sounds amazing. 
except when the wearer takes damage, this effect will disappear. This effect will resume after the end of the wearer's next turn. Now, here's the thing. If you're a sealer player, this actually isn't that bad, right? The only reason I say that is because you zoom through your turns. You get to get turns respectively. But if it's talking about the cycle itself, then yeah, it's not very good. Now you can superimpose it five for free. You get a speed extra by 12 and 24. But again, the minute you get hit, that's it. You gotta wait again to get it back. The problem with this is the taunt characters in this game. Sometimes the taunts don't work. I don't know about you guys. I'd be taunting with the fucking Trailblazer. And sometimes they go and hit Natasha. And I'm like, why are they hitting Natasha? It's so annoying. Or, you know, they might do an AoE. Boss might do an AoE that hits everyone. And then you're fucked. You know, it's... Yeah, this light cone is... Eh. Because it's free. And you can superimpose it. I will put it... In the B tier. Only because you can superimpose it five, Right? But in terms of actual, if you couldn't, like if I was just basing it off of the Super Edition 1, I would put it in C tier. But we're going to put it in B tier because just like this one, you can superimpose them five times for free because you can get it from the Echoes of War and the Light Cone store. So it's it's free, essentially, to superimpose five, which increases the value a little bit. Next, we're going to go with Don Hung's one, which is only silence remains. Increases the wearer's attack by 16%. That's really good for Sela. And if there are two or fewer enemies on the field, increases wearer's crit rate by 12%. That's good for Sela because whether you're in a boss fight, it's useful. And if you're not in a boss fight, it's still useful because of how she works. Your whole thing with Sela is you eat up turns and zoom through enemies. So eventually you will get to a point very quickly that there will be two or fewer enemies on the field. So that actually isn't a bad drawback at all. You're literally going to have this regular crit rate 12% and you're going to have this at flat attack percentage at 16%, which is pretty good. Now we're going to place this one in the A tier. Again, because this is for Sela, we're going to have that crit rate on a regular basis, the way we're going to be zooming through enemies. So yeah, 100% I would put Don Hung's Light Cone for Sela in the A tier. Next, we're going to be looking at Su Shang's here, Swordplay. I think this one's pretty good. For each time the wearer hits the same target, damage dealt increases by 8%, stacking up to 5 times. This effect will be dispelled when the wearer changes targets. Again, I specifically think this one is good for boss fights. Because the way Sela works is you're going to be fighting a lot of different targets anyway in regular battle situations to keep getting her turns up. But for boss fights where you're done with all the waves and it's just the boss up for a little while before they call reinforcements, this is really good. Because 8%, that'll stack up to 40%. 40% which is pretty good so if you hit the enemy five times if you hit the boss five times before like let's say you get a boss break you get a boss break boom sila's got her speed up you do aster buff just there's so many situations where you can hit the 40 percent stack on this but you do have to work a little bit to hit it and because you have to work a little bit to hit it i will put this in the b tier as well just because you have to go out of your own way whereas like again unlike don hung's you naturally, you're not going to have to work to really get that extra crit rate. Next, we're going to be looking at subscribe for more. Now, this bitch is cute as fuck. I'm looking forward to meeting her in a later patch. But anyway, increases the damage of the wearer's basic attack and skill by 24%. That's good. For Sela, that's good. The basic attack, whatever. But the skill, considering how much you use her skill as a Sela player, 24% flat base damage is really good if this is your only option, right? And then on top of that, the effect increases to a 48% damage buff on her skill and basic attack when her current energy reaches its max level. Now, Sela's ult has decent uptime in my opinion, as someone who's been using her. I say I have her ult quite often. With that in mind, let's say you get the talent proc, right? You're on a buff turn. You got a skill point, you're gonna pop that skill. You're gonna get 48% damage buff on top of that skill, on top of the buff state damage and the skill scaling, which is already in the hundreds. That's gonna be a lot of damage. But due to the fact that you need to have the energy up on this, I would say is what lowers its value a little bit. But if you think about the simulated universe and how there's a lot of cards that can give you extra energy, like there's a hunt card that gives you energy every turn, like you let it begin of every turn, I would say this is really good. So I'm gonna place this in the A tier. I will, I will place this in the A tier. I think it's a pretty good one. Now for the last one, we'll be looking at the Battle Pass Light Cone Return to Darkness. Now we will be doing a Battle Pass Light Cone video, look forward to that. But in the meantime, we're talking about the hunt right now. Now, what this does, increases the wearer's crit rate by 12%, and after a critical hit, there's a 16% fixed chance to dispel one buff on the target enemy. This effect can only trigger one time per attack. Per attack. It doesn't say per turn. It says per attack. That's really fucking good. 
let's say you're fighting an enemy and they got an attack buff multiple attack buffs that can all be dispelled you know you're not running peeler who can dispel debuffs one debuff or you are you get one debuff off of peeler you get one debuff off with sealer and on top of that your crit rate is consistently up by 12 percent it's a win-win right you get a flat 12 percent and so i think this is a pretty good one i think this is a pretty good one but due to the fact it is not free to play and it is a battle pass light cone specifically for the hunt light cones we're going to place it in the c tier because you need to pay to acquire it right if you played genshin you know how that battle pass stuff works it's always in the battle pass so because of that it'll be in the c tier i would put it higher if you could acquire it free to play but because you can't acquire it free to play i like the others where you can all pull them specifically this one limited of course it's going to go into the c tier do we even bother looking at the three stars we're going to look at them all together arrows at the start of the battle the wearer's crit rate increases by 12 percent for three turns that's pretty good that's an early like rush early rush crit rate when the wearer defeats an enemy increases attack by 24 percent for three turns now this is way better already again if you're using sealer you're gonna be zooming through enemies if this is your only option dart and arrow it's not the end of the world don't worry about it that's a pretty good starting light cone i would say adversarial when the wearer defeats an enemy increases speed by 10 percent for two turns sealer doesn't need that she doesn't need that because her skill increases her speed for two turns by more than that actually so that is useless for her this is the only good three star light cone for sealer in my opinion because of these three light cones we're going to be placing them b d and d these are just again if you need them i guess but this is better than i would say this is better than that i haven't gonna lie now stat wise this would be higher right it would be like this because of stats but i don't care because this is pay to play it stays in the c tier it will not remove from this tier because you cannot get it as a free to play player and with that guys our tier list is complete for the hunt light cones let me know if you have any different opinions i would love to hear them honestly because i myself am not the best when it comes to this type of stuff so i would like to hear your opinions and look forward to the next one we're going to be going through the battle pass light cones in the next video peace out have a good one guys